failed head gaskets, and broken liner flanges. What can these two problems have in common? 3406 and C15 CAD engines seem to be very demanding on these parts, or maybe it's just because of their sheer population, but this type of failure is not limited to just those engines. But what could cause it? Who is at fault? It's easy to blame the parts, and sometimes it is a defective part. Head gaskets are commonly made by bonding layers of perforated metal core material with composite material. The number of layers vary by applications. Most head gaskets have a fire ring surrounded by a fire wrap. The diameter of the wire and the weld are critical. The weld must crush consistently with the wire and the wrap must be flexible enough to crush without fracturing. Tensile strength, creep relaxation, and crust resistance are all important properties in developing a quality gasket that meets the demands of these heavy duty applications. You can find more detail about information on gasket material on our website. Dimensionally measuring a liner is one thing, but most shops are not equipped to check the crosshatch or hardness of a liner, and destructive testing is needed to determine the chemistry of the material, the case depth of the hardness, and the tensile strength. The integrity of the casting, the machining, and heat treating processes are all vital to producing a quality liner. Get any of these wrong and the liner can fail. But other components affect the cylinder pressures and temperatures increasing the stress on head gaskets. Here are just a few reasons for head gasket failures. So what can both a failed head gasket and a broken liner flange have in common? 3406 and C15 are spacer plated engines, meaning on top of the block is a spacer plate gasket followed by a spacer plate, then the head gasket, and finally the cylinder head. Whether it's a spacer plated engine or a counterboard engine, one area that doesn't get enough attention is the surface of the cylinder block that supports the liner flange. Journeyman technicians and machinists understand how critical this area is for properly supporting the cylinder liner and for maintaining the seal of the head gasket. But unfortunately, until the liners are removed from the cylinder block, there's no way to know the condition of the block's surface. At that point, the engine owner or repair shop may not be prepared for the added expenses or downtime to repair the block properly and may decide to assemble the engine back as is. And while the engine may not have had a problem before, now, with replacing the cylinder liners, the spacer plate gasket, the head gasket, and cleaning all of the surfaces, the conditions have changed and may not be enough to support the new components. OE spec for the flatness of the 3406 and C15 over the entire block surface must be within four thousandths of an inch and cannot vary more than two thousandths over any seven inch section of the surface but the spec for damage to the liner seat area are much tighter and cannot be more than one thousandths in depth in localized areas and cannot be more than half the width of the seat. One thousandths of an inch isn't very much. In fact, it's less than the thickness of the spray paint we sprayed on this piece of aluminum. On this cylinder block, there are noticeable rings around each of the bores. Enlarging the photo, shows the block is in pretty poor shape. Erosion generally destroys the milling marks on the surface of the block, but technicians have told me that they have measured blocks that drop off or taper in this area and the milling marks are still visible. It's always best to measure the block and not just depend on liner protrusion. At a slightly different angle, the damage is more obvious. It's well over a thousandths in depth and covers more than 50% of the width of the seat for the liner. Erosion immediately outside the diameter of the liner flange is not a problem, and often when counterboring the block for inserts, this area will not clean up. To help illustrate the point, we took a new cylinder liner and some lapping compound and worked the surface to see just how the new liner would contact the block. We were not trying to seat the liner we just wanted to do enough to see the pattern.
Now after removing the liner, we can take a closer look at the contact area. These first arrows point out the width of the worn area from the old liner flange. The next set of arrows shows a narrow line where the new liner is making contact. Notice how the contact width varies, and at this point is void completely. These photos only show about a third of the circumference of the bore. So, instead of the liner setting on a flat surface, it is actually setting on a narrow ridge. If assembled in this condition, the ridge can be enough to support the liner so that the liner protrusion is within spec range. And with the liner protrusion recorded as being within spec, the engine is assembled. And now comes the true test. But the liner is not seated firmly. And under the operating forces of the engine, it begins to move or flex. As the movement wears the components, the liner can actually drop down, reducing the liner protrusion and the clamping force on the fire ring of the head gasket. And at some point, the head gasket can no longer maintain a positive seal, and combustion gases begin to seep past. And through no fault of its own, the head gasket fails. In some instances, after a head gasket fails, the liners and blocks have worn together, but the liner protrusions may still be within specs. So a new head gasket and the cylinder head are installed, and the second head gasket may survive. But if it does, it's not an indication that the first head gasket was defective, or that the second head gasket was of better quality. Another scenario is that the localized operating forces are greater than the strength of the liner, and the liner flange fractures. Yes, the liner failed, but it wasn't due to a defective liner. Something as simple as debris under a liner flange can also result in a flange failure. For the block to be repaired correctly, it must be machined for inserts. The damaged area of the block is cut out, and the inserts are installed, rebuilding the liner seat. Often, this can be done with the cylinder block still in the chassis. The quality and the fitment of the insert is critical. This is not the place for a cheap, low-quality part or a machinist that doesn't know what they're doing. The insert must stand up to the same forces that the original cylinder block did, and the fitment must support the insert. If this insert moves or crushes, you're right back in the same situation as before, but with more expenses and less block material to work with for the next repair. It's not just 3406 and C15 engines. This is the picture of a head gasket for a six and a quarter bore cat engine. It's a metal clad gasket and therefore more abrasive to the cylinder block than a composite type gasket. This is a picture of a used cylinder block the head gasket goes on. In this photo, you can see the imprint of the head gasket into the surface of the block. Even after the inserts have been installed and the first cuts to surface of the block have been done, there's still a good outline of the wear pattern from the cylinder head gasket fretting or scrubbing into this block. Yes, there can be defective parts, but more often than not, the failed part is just the result of the problem and not the cause. Not taking the time to rebuild an engine properly or diagnosing a failure should not be an option. The added expense and downtime to repair the engine correctly the second time is far more costly. But until the engine is disassembled, there's no way to know what the conditions are on the inside, so time schedules and cost estimates may need to change if you're going to do the job correctly. Hopefully you found this technical session useful. Thank you for your time and for allowing IPD to share this information. If you have any comments or ideas for future topics or improvements to these technical sessions, please contact us at our website at IPDparts.com.